Here is a short recap from the last part. Naruto met Shikamaru in the Lumio's Badlands. Together they defeated Team Flare and Kabuto. Naruto found Zagreed cells. Naruto caught a helioptile. Naruto defeated Clement to win his fifth patch. Now we resume the story. Naruto arrived at Professor Shikamaru's lab to witness the experiment of forming the Zagreed core. The professor told him that they were just waiting for Mr. Lysander to arrive with the extract of an extinct Zagreed core. Naruto, not understanding a thing, just decided to wait and eat something. Lysander arrived after a while and greeted the professor. They both looked excited as at the prospect of finally achieving their goal. Naruto was skeptical of Lysander and found him to be familiar, but he couldn't quite figure out how or from where. The synchronization process begins as everyone in the lab waited in anticipation, staring at the staring at the ongoing phenomenon. All the scientists in the lab started to clap and celebrate as the full Zagreed code emerges alive and well. Naruto thinks it's really ugly but cute at the same time. Lysander takes the core and examines it. He just holds holds it in the incubator, just looking at it. Before looking at Professor Sycamore, and then he begins to speak. You know, Sycamore, this is really poetic. He says. Remember when we were coming up at the academy, how you were the one at the top of the class, always coming up with innovations, always being one step ahead of me, always too far for me to reach, just yet just close enough to make me miserable by keep by keeping trying to keep up with you. And I tried, I tried my level best to get to where you are now, until until I realized. Your idea of changing the world differed a lot from mine. You were always the gatekeeper. You had all the knowledge and all the talent in the world, but never had the guts or the vision to take charge in order to make the world a better place. And that, my friend, is one thing I have over you. As he finishes speaking, a pyro leaps in and takes Professor Sycamore out, injuring him. And the lab is immediately attacked by Team Flare Grants. Naruto and Fogadier come to the professor's rescue before he could be attacked any further. He angrily tells Lysander that now he remembers why he looked familiar. His outfit, his mannerisms are reminiscent of Team Flayers. He then mocks Lysander by saying that ruining their plans is his favorite hobby. Lysander identifies Naruto as the brat about whom he has been receiving many reports o- over the last few months. Fogadier fires off a water pulse as the battle begins. Pyro immediately intercepts it, intercepts it using a hyper voice, cancelling it out. Progadier then creates three clones who trap Pyro using tornado attacks. Pyro tries to use another hyper voice, but it's useless. Although after repeated tries, Pyro breaks it apart, it is hit by a wind release water pulse, which takes it out. Naruto moves forward to retrieve the Zagreed core, but just then. Purple, a huge purple cloud obstructs him. From the cloud emerges the former Kalos champion, the legendary Sanin, and the snake trainer Orochimaru and his Arbok. Naruto, not knowing who he is, tries to figure it out, and then he remembers Kabu, his first encounter with Kabuto, and how he said that he works for a certain guy named Lord Orochimaru. So this is the trainer that his father defeated in order to become the champion. Naruto's, Naruto is somewhat intimidated by the sheer amount of bloodlust that is radiating from this trainer, but he decides to keep it cool as he is the only he is the strongest trainer in trainer in this lab right now, and he is the only one who can stop him. Fogadier once again uses its wind prison technique by creating four clones and all of them firing the hidden power tornado attack at the Arbok. Trapping it, Naruto wastes no time and orders water pulse, which creates the same water prison that was able to defeat Clement in the first place. But this is when Naruto realizes that this trainer is far ahead of any gym leader of any trainer he has faced so far, as Arbok easily destroys the water prison and destroys all of Progadius' clones with relative ease. It then wraps its tail around Progadius' neck, squeezing the life out of it. Before it could do any further damage. Naruto sends in Tauros and Ivysaur to level the playing field, but unfortunately, one swoop of poison tail takes all of them out. Arbok moves in 
to make the kill but just then a sesame toad arrives out of nowhere it is its color scheme is similar to frogadia before naruto could say anything another trainer arrives this trainer has white hair a spiky look and somewhat familiar to naruto he then realizes that this is jiraiya his father's mentor jiraiya faces off against orochimaru as they both greet each other as if they had known each other for a long time jiraiya tells orochimaru that that's enough and he should leave these kids alone but but orochimaru tells jiraiya that he is way in out of his head here but since he already has what he came for he has no time to waste with chumps like him with that orochimaru disappears in a puff of smoke si professor sikamura and naruto both thank jiraiya but jiraiya tells sikamo that he should have been training instead of doing this professor thing and and then maybe and just maybe he could have done a better job at protecting his lab sikamo is a bit embarrassed but nonetheless thanks jiraiya and apologizes naruto is confused he asks professor sikamo if he also trained under jiraiya and professor sikamo tells that he did he was in fact he was the next batch of students and and so far the last batch that jiraiya trained after training minato and the others jiraiya that tell, then tells naruto that that is the reason why he came here after noticing his battle against clement he knows that naruto has potential but as per the promise he made to his father he is here to make sure that naruto reaches his full potential so beginning fr- so beginning from now he will be his mentor and he will train him in the art of pokemon warfare and other things which will come later so with that they set off for the for the next town which is laver city but but in order to get there they have to cross through the swamps at route 14 jiraiya tells naruto that they will be returning here soon enough as this is the secret passage to mount miyaboku where they will where they will undergo undergo special training but before that they need to clear up some basics here jiraiya asks naruto to empty his bag and reveal all the items he has right now and to jiraiya's disappointment there is a whole bunch of packets of ramen a sunstone and a pokédex next jiraiya tells naruto to reveal all of his pokémon which he does vivillion frogadier helioptile ivysaur toxicroak and tauros then naruto gets a bit sadder and says that he also had a vulpix which has somehow mutated into a demonic version of ninetail and ran away jiraiya tells him that they will fix that too but for now he needs to strengthen the team he has currently jiraiya then calls naruto an idiot for not noticing that the item he has in his hand are the key to making his pokemon stronger he asks naruto to place the sunstone on helioptile and to naruto shock this triggers its evolution into heliolis the same type that he battled in in the lumios gym jiraiya tells naruto that from now on he will be monitoring every move naruto makes while training his pokemon because so far he should have he, because so far he has made a lot of improvements but considering the potential that he has this is absolutely nothing and he hasn't even reached close to the ceiling of what he can really do so for the next just then jiraiya tells naruto that they will be having a battle right here and right now this will be a double battle in which naruto should use frogadier and ivysaur naruto agrees to this as the battle begins jiraiya sends out politoed and a polyrath to battle frogadier and ivysaur politoed's freezer ability immediately starts off a rain but naruto is confident that this rain will work in his favor as per his usual usual strategy he orders frogadier to make three clones which engage the two frog types while the real frogadier begins charging its wind release water pulse on the other hand ivysaur charges in with a razor leaf hitting the two toad pokemon occasionally causing some super effective damage but to his shock polyrath moves in a frightening speed taking out each and every clone of frogadier and then hitting the real frogadier with a powerful dynamic punch knocking it out before it could make a move 
and before Ivysaur could, could process what has happened, Politoed leaps into the air and hits it with a nice beam, taking it out. This proves Naruto that there is a huge level difference between Orochimaru, Jiraiya and the, and the gym leaders. So far he has not even tasted a fraction of, of the power that, le, that the legendary Sanin possesses. Now Jiraiya tells Naruto that so far he, has, he is mildly impressed. But before he could begin Naruto's real training, Naruto needs a few more ex battle experiences here and there. So they will be heading to Labyrinth City and be challenge and challenge the gym there. As they arrived in the city, Na Jiraiya tells Naruto to go on ahead and challenge the gym. He is sure that Naruto will be able to win this match. And after he is done winning, after he is done with his gym battle, he should meet Jiraiya in front of the bathhouse where he'll be he will be doing a special kind of research, which I'm sure you all know. Naruto sighs as he thinks that. Maybe this whole training thing will do more harm than good as his mentor is not really interest, interested in him at this point. But nonetheless, he goes on to challenge the Labyrinth City Gym where the gym leader is Valerie. She, she accepts Naruto's challenge and tells him that this will be a 3-on-3 three -three battle. Upon noticing Valerie, Naruto immediately realizes that if she is this beautiful, her Pokemon must also personify beauty as, well, beauty as well. So Tauros will not be an option in this battle. And as a matter of fact, neither will be Toxico. So the battle begins as Valerie sends out her Sylveon and Naruto sends out his Vivillion. Vivillion starts the battle by firing off a stun spot. But Sylveon uses a safeguard to shield it itself and its allies from any status moves. With its special, with its Ace card gone, Vivillion is essentially no locked in in a long range battle against a Pokemon that has superior special defense and also a type advantage on top of it. Vivillion nonetheless tries a bug buzz attack but it's countered with a hyper voice which after being boosted from Pixelate manages to overpower Vivillion and cause huge damage. Sylveon follows this up by a powerful quick attack sending Vivillion crashing backwards. Vivillion uses a hurricane attack but Sylveon fires moon blasts which manages to blast through the hurricane and hit Vivillion head on. Sylveon then follows this up by another hyper voice which takes the bug type out in a relatively one sided battle. Naruto tries to regain his footing by sending out his next, next pokemon Ivysaur. Ivysaur starts the battle using wind whip to cause some major damage on Sylveon which is, un which is fortunately not that bulky in the physical defense department. This is followed by a Rizali which causes a critical damage. Sylveon fires off a moon blast but Ivysaur fires a sludge bomb in counter. The poison type attack, attack overpowers the moon blast and takes Sylveon out. The next pokemon that Pelleri sends out is Mr. Mime who is also a part psychic type. Ivysaur tries Razor Leaf and Wind Whip but Mr. Mime uses Reflect to minimize the damage and on top of it, it dodges most of the razor leaves. It then uses psychic attack to lift Ivysaur into the air and slam it to the ground, causing super effective damage. Ivysaur tries to rally back using a sludge bomb, but Mr. Mime uses a light screen attack to minimize the damage once again. It is This is followed by another psychic attack, which continues to cause more and more damage to Ivysaur. However, Ivysaur is determined to win this battle. It has not been having the best of luck for the last few battles and it absolutely refuses to lose. This determination finally triggers its evolution into its final stage. This is Venusaur. Venusaur immediately breaks through the psychic attack and with a powerful sludge bomb takes Mr. Mime out, bringing Valerie down to her last Pokemon. This is of course Mawal. Venusaur's grass type attacks don't do much damage at all and on top of it, it its powerful poison attack is absolutely ineffective on the steel type mobile. Despite this, Venusaur tries using the grass type attacks itself. However, mobile is able to overpower it and hit it with a play rough. But Venusaur is able to gain the upper hand once again by using its newest move, Earth Power, which causes some super effective damage on mobile. Realizing that this is not an opponent to hold back against, Valerie triggers mobile's mega evolution into mega mobile. 
and this is where the battle the tide of the battle turns on turns once again mega mobile is able to absolutely manhandle venusaur causing a lot of damage but just then venusaur own mega evolution triggers as naruto has a keystone from the tower of mastery and ivysaur has and ivysaur had had been holding on to the venusaurite for a long long time this triggers its mega evolution into mega venusaur and once again the battle is even due to having an having an overwhelming resistance to venusaur's attack mobile is able to hold its own despite not being on venusaur's level the battle comes to a, comes to a stalemate with with venusaur hitting mobile with earth power and mobile hitting venusaur with a sucker punch right before it they collide one more time both using their full power and this only results in both of them falling out of their mega form and being knocked out venusaur's mega evolution is not stable yet due to its evolution and mega evolution happening in happening in a single battle and this is too much for the grass type to handle but thankfully naruto has only lost two of his pokemon while valeri has lost all three which means naruto is by default the victor and this gives him the fairy patch valeri tells naruto that they should battle once again and this time in a full battle naruto tells him that after he is become the champion he will make sure to defend his title against valeri this gives naruto his fifth gym ba- his sixth gym badge and now he is ready for the special training with jiraiya on the, on the top of mount miyoboku thanks for watching guys that's, that's where i will be ending this part sorry if it felt kind of rushed but yeah this is like the festive season where i'm from so i'm really busy right now and just wanted to say that this will be the last upload for about a week or two so the next part will of course be what if ash was born in the dragon clan so stay tuned for that and uh, yeah that's it enjoy your time for those people in india a very happy festive season hope you're all safe take it easy guys and god bless